So my, I'm heading the National Reference Center at the Institut Pasteur in Paris. And our main uh, mission is the surveillance of the, of the disease in, in mainland France, but also in French overseas territories. So um, since probably most of you are not very familiar with the disease and the pathogens, so uh, leptospirosis, uh, leptospira are, uh, belong to the family of uh, is a bacteria and belong to the phylum of spirochetes. And within this uh, film of spirochetes, so you will find uh, several, several major pathogens, such as Treponema pallidum, the agent of syphilis, Borrelia bogdoferi, the agent of Lyme disease, and uh, Leptospira interrogans, the agent of uh, leptospirosis. As you can see here on this, in the different uh, pictures, all these spirochetes, they share uh, the same morphological features, so they are very thin and helical-shaped uh, 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 bacteria. And uh, as you can see here, but uh, they also have endoflagella. So flagella that are not external to the bacteria, to the cell, but uh, within the periplasmic, periplasmic space. And they make, that makes these bacteria highly motile in highly viscous media. So brief history of leptospirosis. So, um, so the first description of the, of the first uh, a description of the agent of leptospirosis was uh, by a Japanese group almost uh, 100 years ago. And uh, they, what they did in the, this first publication is they uh, inoculate uh, the blood of a patient uh, with uh, what was called at that time the well disease. In, uh, in, uh, so they, they inoculated hamsters with the blood of these patients. And these uh, hamsters, infected hamsters, died of uh, leptospirosis. And they, f they find in the organ of these uh, infected hamsters these bacteria that you can see here with this, with, with, with this, this uh, typical morphology. So the, the same group uh, in Japan published several papers uh, at the same period, so more than 100 years ago, and they have shown that, uh, so these bacteria are the agent of leptospirosis. They also have shown that the, the rats are the main reservoir, and they also have shown that uh, 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 water is uh, probably, exposure to water is probably uh, a major route of transmission of the disease. And uh, so these are really landmark uh, papers, uh, studies, and uh, we did not learn so much on the disease uh, since uh, uh, these first publications. So the cycle of leptospirosis. So leptospirosis is a zoonotic disease. So two groups of animals can, uh, be, can carry the pathogenic bacteria, the rats, which are asymptomatic carriers of the, of the bacteria, and every other mammal, so wild animals or uh, domestic animals, and in this case, the, uh, these uh, infected mammals can develop uh, the, the disease. So all these uh, animals can carry the bacteria in the, in the kidney, in the renal tubules, and they are going to excrete the bacteria uh, in their urine and then contaminate the environment. So the main route of transmission to human is an indirect route of transmission. It's uh, the contact of the water contaminated by the urine of these uh, animals with the abraded skin or the mucous membranes. Then you have dissemination of the bacteria uh, in the host, in the, in, the, in the bloodstream, and the bacteria is going to rapidly reach target organs such as the kidney or, 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 or liver and uh, uh, all organs. And so in the subset of patients are going to develop, develop severe disease with uh, hepatic and renal uh, dysfunctions that can lead to, to death. So the main problem for leptospirosis is the diagnostic. So uh, as you can see, there's no specific, as you, there's a list of other uh, uh, diseases that, uh, that mimic uh, leptospirosis. So there's no specific symptoms. It's an acute fever. It's a, a flu-like syndrome. And uh, which makes the clinical diagnosis difficult. And also the biological uh, diagnostic is difficult. We don't have very efficient tools to for the diagnostic of the, of the disease. So uh, about the burden of the disease. So a, there was a recent study uh, who, who estimated to more than 1 million severe cases of leptospirosis worldwide and 60,000 deaths. As you can see here in this map, uh, uh, 
most of the, 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 the most prevalent, the most uh, the, the countries with the highest incidence are in tropical countries. So in Southeast Asia, for example, in the, the West Indies, in the Latin America, etc., etc. And I had it here uh, a question mark for the African continent because we have very few, few studies on uh, the, the burden of the disease in, in Africa, in most of the African countries. So just briefly to about Africa, so here on this map you can see the countries where uh, leptospirosis have been uh, reported in humans or in animals. So the countries in white are where the disease has never been reported. It's not because the disease is not there, it's just because nobody really looks at the presence of the, of the pathogen in these countries. And here another study in Tanzania uh, showing that uh, uh, a high, uh, significant proportion of uh, non-malaria cases uh, are, uh, can, can be uh, cases of leptospirosis. So this is true in Tanzania, but it's probably true in many other countries in Africa and also in Asia. So leptospirosis is probably under-recognized, uh, it's probably an under-recognized cause of acute fevers in, in many uh, uh, con tropical countries. So leptospirosis is a neglected disease because, as, as I just told you, we have limited information on the disease burden because it affects the most neglected and marginalized populations, because we lack adequate diagnostics, there's no effective control measures. As I told you, the main reservoirs are rats, and it's almost, almost impossible to get, rid of, to get rid of the rats, of the population of rats. There's no, uh, there's, uh, no universal vaccines available, so uh, Imaxio is commercializing uh, a human vaccine, but this vaccine is not available worldwide. And there are a few vaccines that are also available for, for animals, but these uh, vaccines uh, uh, do not allow cross-protection uh, against all the serovars that are circulating. And we have, uh, uh, finally, a limited understanding of the epidemiology uh, and the pathogenesis of the disease. So here, just to uh, show you uh, the list of the parity neglected tropical diseases as uh, established by WHO. So there's, this list is uh, regularly updated by WHO. And so today, I think this list was uh, updated uh, last year in 2017. And there are 17 uh, uh, pathogens listed here. And as you can see, leptospirosis is not among uh, the list of WHO. So leptospirosis is a neglected disease, but it's Oh, it's uh, uh, highly neglected, even by the show. It's not uh, considered as a neglected disease by the show. So here it's a recent work that we have done with uh, some other, other colleagues, just showing that leptospirosis is really neglected. So here you can see uh, the research funding uh, on different uh, diseases, including uh, 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 neglected diseases uh, 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 from WHO here in, indicated by the, the green uh, in green. And you can see the leptospirosis. So when you compare the research funding and the burden of the disease here in terms of uh, DALI, you can see that leptospirosis is highly neglected, even comparing, compared to the other neglected diseases indicated in green. The same when you look at the H index and the bibliometry, so you see that leptospirosis is also highly neglected among all these uh, different uh, diseases when you compare leptospirosis and other diseases <clears throat> with uh, comparing the global burden uh, in the relationship, relationship sorry, between the, the global burden and the, the H index. So leptospirosis for sure is neglect, neglected. So it's also an emerging disease. So this is due to the demographic and ecological changes. So today there are about 1 billion people living in slum areas, like in, uh, in Brazil, for example, in the favelas, or in India, and uh, in these slum areas. So every year during, during the rainy season, you have outbreaks of leptospirosis due to rat-borne transmission in these slum areas. And this urban population, uh, urban population living in slum areas are going to double in the next 25 years. So because of this, of this uh, demographic change, uh, leptospirosis is probably going to emerge uh, in the next few years. It's also emerging because of the climatic changes with the global warming and the more uh, frequent appearance of extreme climatic events such as hurricanes just that are responsible for uh, floodings and, uh, and outbreaks of leptospirosis in these tropical countries. Here, just to show you the, the strong association between uh, 
uh, heavy rainfall, the rainy season, and outbreaks of leptospirosis. So here it's an example in Mayotte, which is uh, one of the French uh, department, in a, which is a very small island in the Indian, the Indian Ocean between Madagascar and the African continent. And so you can see here in blue uh, the, the monthly rainfall, and in uh, the la lane in orange, the number of cases of leptospirosis uh, every year. And you can see there's each, each year, after the rainy season, after the peak of uh, pluviometry of the monthly and rainfall, you have outbreaks of leptospirosis uh, in, in, this, uh, in this island. And this is, we have, you have the same picture in uh, other tropical countries. So these are in, uh, in developing countries. Uh, and in developed countries, like uh, here in Europe or in the US, for example, here, uh, water exposure also is uh, strongly uh, is, uh, correlated to, so usually with uh, uh, cases of leptospirosis. So here it's an example of a triathlon in, uh, in the US. Uh, so you can see uh, on this scheme the day of the triathlon and uh, all the, the confirmed cases and suspected cases for leptospirosis following this uh, triathlon. And so you can determine, so here the box in, in black are uh, the confirmed cases. So you can see the first confirmed cases uh, happens about uh, five, six days after the race of the triathlon. And so in this uh, uh, case, there was more than 50 participants of the triathlon which, we, we, with the leptospirosis, which, are, which were leptospirosis cases. And this uh, happens uh, 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 even here in, in Europe and in France uh, every year. So here it's an example here in, in Brittany, in France, uh, from uh, two years ago among kayakers, so there was many cases, about more than 10 cases of uh, uh, people who got leptospirosis after doing uh, kayaking in this river in Brittany. And so usually what happens is, uh, so you have uh, rodents or any other mammals uh, that are going to contaminate the environment, uh, the, the banks of a uh, river, for example, with their urine, and after uh, uh, heavy rainfalls or just uh, 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 rain events, the, the soil is going to be uh, resuspended, all the particles of the soil, including the urine of these uh, rodents, are going to be resuspended and, and contaminate the rivers, and then people then after are going to, to swim in, the, in this river, and then they can, they can, uh, you can have transmission of the disease to, to, the, to these people. So what about the situation in France? So at the Institut Pasteur, we have a long history of a passive surveillance of, of the disease. So here it's a, just a, a book from a, uh, the first uh, uh, scientist who worked on leptospirosis in, in France, so Louis Martin and Auguste Petit from 1919, so just after the, the First World War. So as you can see, so uh, here, uh, the, the, in, so the number of cases in mainland France in the last century, and what you can see here is that in the last uh, uh, four years, uh, starting from 2014, uh, we have a two-fold increase of the number of cases in comparison to, in comparison to the previous years. So there's an, uh, there's an increase, uh, two, at least two-fold increase of the number of cases. And this situation in mainland France uh, is also observed in, other, uh, in some of the European countries. So this is uh, an example of, uh, of Netherlands, also, where there's a reference center for leptospirosis and where there's active, uh, passive surveillance for many, many years. And the, in 2014, they also observed a, a threefold increase of the number of human cases in comparison to the previous years. So we don't know exactly what are the, the, the reasons for this uh, emergence in, in Europe. So they, they can be, can, it can be due to the climate, uh, winters that are um, uh, mild winters that allow for the bacteria to survive for a longer period in the environment, to the increase of the rat population. It can be to uh, people that are doing more water activities. It can be also due to the diagnostics, so there are more uh, uh, labs and hospitals doing uh, uh, diagnostics. Uh, so we don't really know what are the reasons of this uh, emergence in, in most of the European countries. Just to show you the, some of the data of the reference center, so uh, as you can see in the, the first scheme, so that uh, the highest number of cases occur uh, always at the end of summer, in August and September, so when there are probably more exposure to water during uh, water activities. And uh, below, so you can see the, in, the, the infecting serogroup, so I did not 
told you, but there's a high diversity of serovar and, and, and sero group uh, in, uh, among leptospira. And so by using a surgical technique called MIT, Macroscopic Agglutination Test, which was developed 100 years ago in, at the Institute Pasteur, we can, in some cases, identify the infecting sero group. And so you can see here that uh, almost about one third of the uh, one third of the cases of uh, leptospirosis in men and friends are due to the heterohemorrhagia sero group, which is responsible for the most severe infection. So what about leptospirosis in animals? Uh, so here, in Lyon, uh, there was a recent study uh, a few years ago uh, from the veterinarian school of uh, Lyon where they uh, captured some rats, uh, more than 80 rats, and they observed more than 40% of prevalence of uh, leptospirosis is in rats. So most of the rats, not most, but a high proportion of rats uh, are carriers of the, of the pathogenic bacteria of the pathogenic leptospira. The same group, uh, uh, more recently, also did a, a study on a, on a large, uh, they screen more than 1,000 samples from uh, white animals, so all animals except rodents, except rats, <coughs> in, several, in, in the east, north, uh, mostly north and uh, east of France. And uh, so they observed for the prevalence of uh, leptospirosis in, the, in, these, uh, white in these white animals. And uh, unexpectedly, as you can see here, they observe that uh, the hedgehogs are a good reservoir, an important reservoir for leptospirosis. So le the pathogenic leptospira is present in many, many uh, animals, and they are the reservoir for, and they, they're going to contaminate the environment. And here, just a, a, a recent paper also that where we, we showed that uh, uh, we were we identified with some colleagues in Belgium where we identify uh, several cases of leptospirosis due to uh, the presence of uh, pet mice of pet rats. Uh, so transmission from these pet rodents uh, that, that were positive for for, for, for leptospirosis and uh, transmission to their owners. You know, uh, so there was many many few few, few cases of uh, transmission from pet mice pet rodents pet. Uh, rats to, to, uh, to, uh, to their owners. So this was the situation in men and France. So what is the situation in French overseas territories? Because this is also one of the mission of the reference center. So as you can see, so we have about uh, 1.9 cases for 100,000 inhabitants in men and France. But the incidence can be five times to 500 uh, times higher in French overseas territories. In Martinique, in Guadeloupe, in the French uh, uh, French West Indies, uh, in, in Futuna, in uh, New Caledonia, in the Pacific Ocean, French Polynesia, Mayotte, La Réunion, and French Guyana. So the incidence is much more higher in these uh, uh, French overseas territories. So what uh, looks like the, the agent of leptospirosis? So this is one of the uh, topic of research that we have in the lab, uh, trying to better understand what are the virulence factors of these bacteria. So uh, again, so you can see these bacteria that are uh, thin and uh, with this helical uh, shape morphology. They, are, they have a, a cell wall archi architecture which is very relate, uh, closely related to the, similar to the gram-negative bacteria with two membranes, uh, outer membrane and the inner membrane. And you have uh, lipopolysaccharides uh, at the surface of these bacteria. So these lipi uh, lipopolysaccharides are the major antigens and uh, uh, the immune response is directed mainly against these uh, uh, major antigens. And so when you have uh, endoflagella, so these endoflagella, there's one endoflagellum attached at each extremity of the bacteria. Uh, so the, as I told you before, these endoflagella are located in the periplasmic space. And the rotation of this uh, endoflagella uh, makes these bacteria highly motized, and they can rapidly disseminate in the organism, in the host, and reach the target organs. So just for you, for, for some of you who did not see these bacteria under the microscope, so uh, this is a picture uh, under the dark film microscope, where you can see these bacteria that are, uh, that are highly motile. And this is what, one of the uh, topic of research that we have in the lab, is trying to understand how these bacteria uh, move very fastly in a, a highly viscous media. 
So, uh, as I told you, there's a high diversity of species and serovars. So today there are more than 20 species that have been described. Uh, these species are clustered in three different groups. The saprophytes, which are non-pathogenic bacteria that are found in the environment. The pathogens, which are responsible for uh, the most severe infections in humans and in animals. And there are the a third group called intermediates, which are closely related, phylogenetically related to the pathogens and that are probably uh, responsible for milder infections in, in humans and in animals. Uh, so here this uh, arrow in red, just indicating Leptospira interrogans, which is probably uh, the species responsible for the most severe infections in, in humans. So there are m major knowledge gaps in the field. So for example, there are several questions, like for example, what are the drivers of this emergence of, of the disease? Uh, as, as we observed in Europe and, and, and worldwide, uh, is it because of the climate change or any other factors? So this is some question we would like to, to address, to answer. What is the ecology of the bacterium? So uh, the survival of the bacteria in development is, a, is, very, is very important, is a key in the transmission of the disease from the environment to, to humans. So we don't know a lot about the survival of these bacteria. What makes Leptospira interrogans a major pathogen? So this is one of the topics also of the lab. What could be the effective control measures? Uh, uh, so it's a, a complex uh, a cycle. So we can have intervention in the environment or in the animal reservoir or in humans. So they, there's many things we, we can try to do to, to control this uh, disease. And what method also can be uh, we, we, there's also an urgent need trying to develop some new uh, diagnostic tools to, uh, to make an early diagnosis of the disease. Because what, what I did not say is that this disease can be treatable by antibiotics. There's no resistant, uh, non-resistant to antibiotics known in these uh, bacteria, but the antibiotic has to, be, has to be done very early in the course of the disease, otherwise it will be, be complicated to, to cure the, the, the patient. Just briefly to uh, show you so the, the course of the infection, so the kinetics of infection. So the incubation period is about one week, and then so you're going to detect the bacteria in the blood during the first week after the onset of the symptoms. So you can do PCR to detect the bacteria in the, in the, in the blood. And then after the, uh, the second week, during the second week after the onset of symptoms, the bacteria will disappear from the blood and you, you will detect in this case uh, the antibodies against the bacteria. And so you can use different surgical techniques uh, like an ELISA or uh, the microscopic agglutination test. You can also detect the bacteria in the, in the urine uh, after uh, the second uh, week uh, after the onset of symptoms. So I think I'm going to conclude. So what are the challenges of this neglected but emerging zoonotic disease? So we have a critical need for diagnostics and, and, and trying to, uh, to convince uh, commercial partners to, to invest in this uh, and the, uh, to, to develop new tools for, for the diagnostic of the disease. Uh, this is particularly true in tropical countries, in poor countries. All the, most of the tools that we have today, uh, they are not very efficient with poor sensitivity. Uh, we need also to isolate more strains to have a better idea of what are the strains that are circulating worldwide. Uh, I didn't have time, time to say, but uh, these bacteria are fastest used bacteria, difficult to grow and difficult to isolate from uh, biological or, or environmental samples. So we don't have a good idea of what of the diversity of the strains that are circulating worldwide. And this is very important to, to better uh, uh, estimate the efficacy of vaccines or, or, or diagnostic tools that we have uh, available. Uh, vaccine development, so there are some animals and human vaccines that are uh, available, but they confer short-term efficacy and they are usually cellular specific. Uh, variance factors, so they are so the, all the pathogenesis is poorly understood and there are very few groups working on the disease and, and on the pathogen. Uh, clinical investigation, trying to better understand what are the pronostic factors that are, respon that, that are uh, responsible for the most severe uh, cases in humans and trying to better understand the, 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 the transmission of the disease. So with that, I would like to thank uh, all the people from the lab at the Institute Pasteur. Uh, thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, Thank you.